Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I want to talk about each of the knives in my core collection and what I use them for. Uh, in past videos, I've, you know, referenced certain knives and I'm like, yeah, this is a user or this is a beater or this is a light user, you know, and I vaguely explain what I do or don't use them for. Um, I figured you guys might find it interesting to find out what each knife in my collection gets used for. Now, this is most of my collection. I do have a few weird ones floating around that, you know, I've acquired for one reason or another. And a lot of the other ones are just low end stuff that don't, that they, they don't get used at all. Um, but, uh, this is the most interesting part of my collection. It's definitely the most expensive part of my collection and all of the knives out here, except for one get used. So I'm going to go through each one. I'm going to say, you know, what it is, what I use it for, uh, how much it's worth for people who are new. You know, I'm not afraid to use an expensive knife. Uh, I've got knives of all price ranges out here and I'll also explain exactly how I acquired it. Um, so <laughs> as you can see, um, I've ended up with a lot of really random stuff. I mean, you look at this and you, you look back at some of my videos and you're like, his taste is really kind of weird, you know, kind of hard to pinpoint. I've got a lot of the popular flagship stuff out here, but I've also got some just off the wall, bizarre stuff. Um, and, uh, that's, that's kind of why I, I want to explain it here. So anyways, let's go ahead and start up here on the top left. A lot of you guys will recognize this as the Spyderco PM2. Uh, and also as one of the main size comparison knives on my channel, this PM2 was purchased probably two years ago, something like that. It's a plain S30V PM2. These are made in the United States. I think you can get these uh, base for about $140. I added the um, uh, fly tan, or I'm not the uh, fly tan, but a custom aftermarket uh, scales because I wanted to try some of this JG10. Um, and then I also added the flytanium backspacer. For a long time, it had a pocket clip. It actually had the MXG deep carry clip that is on the um, uh, Shaman now. But I took that off because I don't carry this knife. It definitely gets used. In fact, this knife is pretty much the main knife that I use for cutting tape on boxes down here in what I refer to as the dungeon or my recording studio. Um, it, uh, it, it uh, reshapes things. Sometimes I reshape labels and things. Um, this knife actually does get used a lot for, but not anything mega, mega hard. It's really just cardboard tape, uh, things like that, shipping labels. Um, this is an awesome knife. It um, has been used a lot, and it really hasn't needed uh, resharpening. Um, and um, I, I, I appreciate it for what it is. It's not my favorite thing to actually carry for EDC. I know it's a really, really popular model, but that's what I use it for. Next up, the Spyderco Shaman. This is probably the second most carried knife that I own. It definitely needs a new edge. This knife will get carried and used for pretty much anything. It is almost a beater with very few reservations. Um, you know, I'm obviously not going to hammer this into concrete or anything like that. It's not a knife that I'm going to throw around, you know, nearly as much in terms of like not caring about it as like the rat. Uh, these are now about $200 knives. This is another Spyderco made in the United States. And obviously I know a lot of my audience, you guys know this, but just in case there are new people, um, wonderful knife, carry that all the time. It's one of my favorite knives of all time. Next up, uh, the Civivi Praxis. And by the way, I purchased that knife. Boy, a lot of you guys remember when I unboxed it, probably a year and a half ago, something like that. The Civivi Praxis here, uh, this knife is made in China. They run about 40 bucks. Um, this is 9CR 18 MOV G10. Um, this is probably one of my favorite budget knives of all time, and it is definitely a beater. This knife was actually given as a gift to the channel by a viewer, um, and this is a wonderful gift. It was a knife that I was expecting to like, but I, I didn't think I was going to like it this much. Um, so, so, you know, I, I never encourage people to send gifts, but sometimes people send gifts and they just blow me away. This is one of those knives. I will use this knife for anything. I will throw it around. It has been absolutely caked. It has been resharpened. It's been cleaned. This thing holds up. Absolutely love it. Next up, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Uh, it's another US made knife. They run about $159 on Knifeworks. This is, uh, once again, what I, one of the knives that I consider to be one of the best out there. Uh, M390 Contour G10, right? Again, this knife is pretty much going to be used for almost anything. It's not thrown around quite as much as the Praxis. About the same as the Shaman. 
It gets carried about 25% mm, the time uh, the Shaman does. This is a size comparison knife. Um, I love that knife, really do. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't get carried as much as the Shaman or you know one of the other knives out here. Really, really cool. Um, this is a custom Damasteel scalpel. Now, I think these run about $150. This is a Carver Custom. You can check out Carver Knives on Instagram. This was actually a gift from uh, Jeff Goodenow. A lot of you guys know that name on this channel. This is a knife that I will carry uh, to special occasions. It's got a bottle opener. Uh, it's got a uh, uh, Timascus clip. Um, it absolutely does get used. You can see there the edge has been used a little bit. This is a knife that I would legitimately carry to, you know, church or a cocktail party. Somewhere where it's probably not going to get pulled out often. And if it does, it's not going to be the scariest thing in the entire world. I don't have any reservations with that. I don't plan to ever give, get rid of it. But again, it's really just going to be used for like, you know, tape and cardboard and stuff like that. Um, next up, we have the Ontario Rat 1. This knife, I think, has is about as old as the channel. Um, this knife has absolutely been beaten on. It has been used for everything. There is, there's literally nothing. It, like the Praxis, I will use this for pretty much anything. If I'm being honest, I have pride with this knife. Um, now, I know the limitations of it. I'm obviously not going to jam it all the way in and pry as hard as I possibly can because I feel like if I really wanted to, I might be able to snap the blade. But... Um, I will use it uh, for things outside of the realm of normal for a knife. It is still solid. It's locking up. Eh, it's getting a little later, 65%, 70%, something like that, but it's still solid. This is such a wonderful user knife. I know it's not king anymore, but, man, for 40 bucks or even less, 28 bucks for the Aus 8 version, yeah, that thing's still a great knife. It's not the king of the budget knives anymore, but, man, it's a great knife, and I can, I can attest to its durability. It will absolutely hold up. Um, next up, the Microtech. Combat Truidon Hellhound Signature Series. This is about a $600 OTF. This was a gift from my wonderful wife. Um, <laughs> she knew that I wanted one back after I sold my 2014 one a long time ago. 204P American made uh, aluminum. For a long time, I just the honeymoon phase with this guy lasted forever because it was just so cool. And I, I didn't want to put a mark on it. And truthfully, there are still no marks on it. I carry this knife every now and then when I'm feeling, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to carry the Combat Truidon today. And yeah, it's legal here in Kansas. We can carry that. It might not be legal everywhere. Um, but yeah, I, I do carry and periodically use it. It doesn't get used for hardly anything. But I, I will use it, right? It's not a knife that I'm going to take outside and beat on the same way that I do as the rat. Um, maybe every now and then I'll make a small cut into a package, right? If the bo box comes with it, we have this, uh, subscription to this food thing, right? This, uh, healthy food box that comes and we, you know, it's mainly for the kids. It's so that the kids always have, you know, healthy meals in the evenings. Um, but, uh, I'll cut open the box so my wife can get the ingredients and, you know, we prepare it. Um, that's pretty much it though. <laughs> this was a gift. I will never, ever get rid of it, Right. Um, so there's no reason not to use it. So as time goes on, I will probably use this knife more and more and more and more. And as uh, X-Ring has proven, if you haven't checked out X-Ring on YouTube, check them out. Uh, those are ridiculously durable. So when the time comes for me to really beat on it, uh, I can rest assured it's going to be intact. Next up, my most carried knife, uh, at least for the last, like, yeah, I think I think this is the most carried knife ever, right? Uh, in, in my entire life. Because even my other EDC knives from the past have always somehow managed to get sold. Another gift from my wife. Um, this is the Spyderco Para 3 G10 in Maximate. Um, yeah, this knife will pretty much get used for anything in the same way that the Shaman, the Ritter Hogue will. It doesn't quite get beat on as much. Like if I'm going to go outside and I'm going to, like when we re-roofed our house, this guy, this guy, and the Tough Light, which is upstairs because it is once again completely and totally caked. The Tough Light's not in this video. The Tough Light is basically destroyed. Um, I think I even managed to mess up the internals of the pivot, but that's why it's not in this video. Um, but the, uh, the Spyderco Para 3 will get used for about 90% of, you know, anything I can think of, right? I'm not going to pry with this thing. I'm not going to cut into, you know, knowingly cut into staples or anything like that. But this knife will pretty much get used for anything else. I have cut into wood with this, heavy plastic. Um, I'm just so impressed with Maximet. And um, I, I really love this knife. Um, the combination of the uh, small, si the medium size of this knife, uh, the MXG deep carry clip, and the amazing ergonomic hand positions. This is just, it's such an easy knife to manipulate. And I've 
the entire thing is so second nature to me now. Um, I just, my hand knows exactly what to do with this. This really, this knife in particular feels like an extension of my hand and I just love using it. It's, it's a perfect combination of something that looks attractive to me, but is mostly, you know, most of the aesthetic lines are uh, utilitarian, right? So it's just, it's so easy to come out of the pocket, to deploy it, to use it, get my hand in whatever position I want, and then use that compression lock to close it up and put it back into my pocket with one hand because of that awesome MXG cl clip. Man, I love that knife. Um, next up, the Gerber flat iron. Um, once again, as you can see, much like the um, Civivi Praxis and the Rat, this thing will get beat on for, I mean, it'll get used for pretty much anything. I did not give this knife a good review. I was upset about the 7CR steel. I was upset about some fit and finish issues. Um, but you know what? I've taken this thing out and beat on it. And uh, it's got a little bit of lock stick. Um, it's got a little tiny, it's got a, a hint of up and down play. I'm not sure what that's all about. But, you know, I've got another one here that Nick Shabazz accidentally sent me, sent me along with a bunch of other knives. And his doesn't exhibit any of the same flaws that mine does. And at the same time, as you can see, I mean, this thing's, it's been cleaned up, but it's been thrown around. That 7CR steel isn't worth a darn at all. <laughs> it went dull almost immediately. But newer versions of this knife uh, come in D2, which I know to be better, especially in the case of my rat. Um, and even still, this thing has, has held up. And it's literally been thrown across the roof, right? Uh, whether it's been, uh, the roof was stripped off and the nails are hitting it or the, across the shingles. I mean, that's what those, those blemishes are all over it. It has literally been thrown, uh, from one person. That's not a safe thing to do. Don't throw a pocket knife to somebody. Obviously it was closed. Somebody on the other side of the roof needed a knife and we taught, I, I just tossed it and it, he missed <laughs> and it slid down the roof. No big deal, right? These come, by the way, I didn't say how much the pair of three maximum was. These are about 200 bucks now, 190 bucks, something like that. Uh, these guys in the aluminum form, I think come in in 40, maybe 50 bucks. Uh, I think maybe 40, something like that. But yeah, I might need to re-review the flat iron, a newer version of it, because I I'm thinking maybe some of the, the, the crap that I gave it was not justified. Um, moving on here, this is the, uh, Zeba knives custom. Um, I believe this is the S3 or S5 mini. I always mess that up. This is a custom knife. It was given to me by Jeff. This knife absolutely does get used. It does get carried. This is one of those knives where if I'm just feeling, like, man, I just want to carry a custom knife that's cool. That's got some of these awesome handmade elements, right? This flame titanium. And I believe this is uh, M390. It might be S35VN. It's not marked on there. Um, this knife actually needs a new edge. <laughs> I've beaten this thing down and it's uh, it's definitely ready for a new edge. Um, I, I just don't have any problem using this. This thing is such a tough build. Um, and it is kind of thick and kind of chunky. I can only get a three finger position on it, but when I carry it, I got no problem getting this thing out and using it. It just, this was a gift, another wonderful gift from uh, Jeff. And I, I just, I enjoy using it. You know, it's one of those where, um, I, I guess maybe because it's a gift and because I know that I'm never going to get rid of it, maybe it's, it makes me more likely to carry it, even though that's not the same logic that's applied to the Combat Truidon, I have no idea why I am the way that I am, right? This is one of those things where it's, it's really hard to explain exactly why I treat certain knives the way that I do. Moving on here, the, uh, another gift from Jeff. Um, this is one of my, <laughs> this is one of my personal favorites. This is a number two of 40, as you can see right there, Protec Strider SNG in titanium. Not many side opening automatic knives out there in titanium. This is 154 CM steel. It sure doesn't look like it, but you can see a couple of little marks here and there. This knife absolutely does get used and it does get carried. Once again, about the same as the Shaman or the Ritter Hogue. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to shy away from using it. It doesn't really bother me if I get a mark on it or if I get a nick in the edge, especially considering it's 154 CM. I probably won't throw it around on a roof like I would, um, you know, the Rat or the uh, Civivi. You know, sometimes it's nice to just have a less expensive. It's still important to care for your tools, to use the appropriate tool at the appropriate time. So when I say that I use the rat harder, you know, a lot of people are like, why do you even have all those expensive knives? You know what, if you use the rat so hard? Well, the truth is, is that the rat and the Civivi oftentimes get used for things that are not knife tasks, right? So that's what I mean. Like if if there's a prying task, am I gonna shy away from it if all I have is the rat or the, or the um, practice on me? No, because I don't really care. In the event that they break, right, which is 
more more likely if you're using it for tasks like that, it's not a big deal because they're not that expensive. Now, I don't think this would break if I decided to use it for something like that. Don't though, because it's a knife and you know the warranty's not gonna cover it because it's not made to do that. But I'm not gonna use it for stuff like that because it is it was a gift and um, this was almost $500 brand new. Um, now the standard version of this is not 500. The standard version of this is about 200, but this comes in about the same price as an actual Strider. Still U.S. made, um, but yeah, I, I like to you I, I like to carry this knife and use it, and I won't shy away from um, just about you know anything. I mean, a regular knife task, right? If it's wood, if it's heavy rope, cardboard, right? I don't care if it gets dirty or if it gets a scratch on it. No big deal. This is the brand new uh, prototype. ProTech Malibu in the reverse Tanto. Um, this was sent to me by uh, ProTech Knives and it has not left my pocket since I unboxed it. It's only been about, I think like four days, but this has been in my pocket every single day. It's already got a couple of little tiny marks on it. Probably not scratches. It's probably just stuff it's rubbed up against. In fact, yeah, it's already rubbing. That stuff is rubbing off. So this is basically brand new. Um, this is a button lock. These are about to drop. Um, so check out that unboxing if you want the link to uh, Blade HQ where it shows the listing. I think they're going to drop here this coming week, the new ones with the reverse Tanto. 20 CV uh, aluminum, this is about 200 bucks. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this and I'm going to use it. This is a prototype um, and I it just that's it's sentimental to me now. And so, yeah, um, I think that's going to find its way into my permanent rotation absolutely next up we have the benchmade mini crooked river custom this knife was given to me by uh mr shaker mt and it is beautiful he actually built it on the uh, custom shop on the benchmade website blue g10 i believe these are aluminum bolsters and it's an aluminum pivot collar 20 cv steel this is just a wonderful edc knife once again uh, I won't shy away from use. I've actually, you know, multiple times gone out to use this in the backyard and just stabbed it into the fence instead of, because it, sometimes it's, depending on what I'm doing and where I am in my yard, sometimes it's easier when I'm, you know, if I use it and then I need both hands, it's easier to just jam it into the fence beside me <laughs> and just keep working with my hands and then come back to the knife. This thing is really held up. Still no blade play. Um, it, I, I swear the custom shop has better fit and finish than, uh, uh, you know, Benchmade knives that you just order from a retailer or find at a store. I may be wrong about that, but that's just my experience with custom shop knives. But yeah, uh, we've got a couple of little tiny right there, right there, right there. A couple of little nicks in the blade from use, but nothing crazy. It doesn't get carried as much as the Shaman or the Para 3, but yeah, I will definitely use it. I do not care if that thing gets a scratch on it. Next up, the Benchmade Super Freak. Um, this knife, uh, recently was used in a lot of sheetrock and I, I did a little bit of cleaning on it. My camera hates this knife. I did a little bit of cleaning on it. This is M4 and, uh, this knife has really given me a good uh, perspective on CPM M4. Um, yeah, I will beat on this knife. In fact, truthfully, I will beat on this knife a little bit harder than the, um, the Shaman, uh, than the Ritter Hogue, uh, even than the Para 3. This knife doesn't get carried or EDC'd often, but it certainly has become a work knife. Um, I have thrown this around in the yard. I've gotten dirt inside of it. Those phosphor bronze uh, washers really do a good job of keeping that out of there. But um, I have had to take it apart and clean it a little bit. This was actually gifted to me by Justin the Hunter uh, on Instagram. And um, yeah, I uh, I love M4. And I've also come to respect um, the Cerakote that Benchmade uses on their blades because this is held up. Now, I haven't had this knife nearly as long as some of the other ones. But man, it's good. It definitely needs a new edge. I've beaten this M4 blade this M4 edge kind of into the ground and it's come back to, I mean, it's still sharp, but it's basically what I'd call like a, a, a like less than a working edge, more of a caveman edge. Um, so yeah, moving on here. And by the way, the, um, ProTech Malibu comes in at 190. These start at 200, but this custom shop variant was likely 250, 260. Uh, these run about 195, um, between the, the Mal, the Malibu at one. 90 they uh this version at uh the, the crooked river at uh, 260 ish and the uh benchmade super freak at 195 next up the microtech socom elite another gift from my wife and one that i will never ever part with for a long time i did not use this knife at all kind of the same thing going on with the combat truidon here lately i've been carrying and using this knife a little bit more it is basically brand new still and I, I this this uh, is a 2018 release I think it actually says 
on the blade. Yeah, June of 2018. So this knife is actually two years old and is essentially brand new. It still locks up solid. It still has that nice fall shot action, but I just haven't used it much. It's definitely going to start getting used more often uh, lately. Um, that knife I named is the one knife that I would probably carry into the hypothetical apocalypse. Not that I believe the end of the world is coming. Please spare me your conspiracy theories. I, I'm not interested. Um, but uh, the, um, yeah, I mean, this thing is definitely a hard use knife. And I'm really interested in taking it out and beating on it and perhaps beating on it as hard as I do my um, Civivi and my Rat. Probably with a little bit of reserve because I obviously don't want to break it. I don't want to avoid the warranty. This was a gift, right? So people that say, oh, your tools were meant to be used. Well, they're meant to be used as the tools that they were designed to be. A knife is not meant to be used as a hammer or a pry bar. So yeah, I'm going to have certain reservations, obviously. But I would like to really put that thing to the test without, you know, stepping over the line too far. So perhaps that'll be more so in the future. This is the, uh, and by the way, these come in at about 280, 270 to 280 when you can find them, I think. Um... This is the Kaiser uh, XL Sheepdog, another gift from Shaker. These come in when you can find them at about 100 bucks. These are made in China, uh, 154 CM and G10. This thing is freaking huge. It's way too big to be EDC, but you know what I use it for? And I use it often for this, um, breaking down cardboard boxes in my garage. Oh my gosh, that blade. <laughs> this thing goes and goes and goes. It's so thin behind the edge because of the draw. It's, it's only 135 thousandths on the spine, so there's so much room to drop. This thing is so comfortable for long periods of cut. It's Honestly, it's a little bit cumbersome to flip repeatedly because the weight of the blade and that flipper tab kind of really, it kind of hurts after a while to disengage and have that kind of, that hammer face of a flipper tab come down on your thumb, right? And the flipper tab is big, right? So there's nothing overly sharp on the knife, but this isn't a knife that's you know overly uh, uh, fun to flip, but to use... Man, oh my gosh, a lot of people look at this and they see a food prep blade. This thing is a cardboard destroyer. It is absolutely the primary tool that I use to break down boxes in my garage. And the boxes stack up. You know, like many of you, we have a lot of subscription services in this house. Um, so the boxes pile up. I like to break them down, keep everything organized. So I do actually spend a lot of time doing that. 154 CM will lose its razor's edge fairly quickly. But because of the geometry of that blade... It just keeps going and it's it's easy and this it doesn't get hung up it's just amazing i love this thing <laughs> i wish that they were more available you can still get the medium and the small sheepdog um, but these large ones are periodically unavailable um, next up here we have the todd Begg steelcraft series uh three quarter quake and this was a gift from my buddy david uh, these things go for about 400 I think they're 400 to 425 bucks. S35VN, uh, carbon fiber laid into DLC coated titanium. It's a sweet knife. Absolutely. It's made by Riot. Not made in the United States. It's made in China, but Riot is, has the, I mean, even for, you know, like a lot of people here in China, for new people, a lot of people here in China and they go, oh, it's just, actually there are some super high quality, like China, there, there, there are some really junk knives that come out of China, undoubtedly, but Brands like We and Riot, Bestec, some of these brands are actually challenging um, U.S. production uh, quality um, pretty well. In fact, Riot is known to have some of the very, very best manufacturing quality in the world in terms of folding knives. So, yeah, this is made super well. Um, I don't carry or use this knife very much. I don't have any reservations against it, right? If I got a scratch on it, it certainly wouldn't kill me. Um, I think it's the trailing point blade that I just don't find the most idea. Well, I find it to be probably a little bit on, I mean, let's be honest. There's a lot of blade lengths and shapes that I, that I own that are com almost completely and totally unnecessary for EDC. Right. But I find the clip point blade to be, com you know, almost absolutely unnecessary for what I've used it for. But then again, every now and then I carry the combat Truid on and let's be honest here, guys, I don't need this blade, <laughs> but I like to carry it. Right. So perhaps this knife will get used more and more and more in the future. I hope so. I'm never going to get rid of it because David was one of the people who helped me start the channel. And that was a wonderful gift. And I, I really, really like it. Next up, another knife that does not get carried often. Another gift 
from my wife. This was actually the first gift she ever gave me. And by the way, she gives me a new gift uh, every year for our anniversary. The deal is, is that she has to pick the knife. I don't get, have to, I, I can't give any inputs. I can't give any hints. She just uses the information that she's picked up from my incessant rambling for uh, the, you know, the year. And then she picks something out. She's pretty good at understanding materials and what knives should cost by, you know, manufacturer or uh, where they are manufactured, different brands and things like that. Um, and she knew that I was really into textured titanium and I was looking for, I think at the time I was looking for a smaller knife and I really liked M390. And this is the Lion Steel TRE Titanium. I think these are, well, at the time they were $300 knives. I, I bet you can get them for less now. Probably, uh, what are they? $250 to $275, something like that. You can, uh, they call it the TRE 3 Rapid Exchange because it's got a slot for a flipper tab. I took the flipper tab off because I like this little, you know, thumb thing or finger thing this it's not really a disc it's not really a stud it's kind of a mix between the two um, but yeah it runs on bearings this thing has become hyper smooth um, I I carry this knife on very special occasions um, you know ones that would call like I still want to carry you know a knife that's capable but um, not something that's gigantic right so this is kind of a maybe a knife that I might carry to a wedding um, or just I don't know a night a nicer party or something like that um, it does not get carried often, but it does get used. That blade definitely has a couple of small rolls and nicks in there. I know a lot of people are like, why don't you maintain your knives? A lot of times, guys, I just don't, I don't have the time to sit down and make sure that every single edge is absolutely perfect at the end of every day. I use the knives until it wears down to an edge that I find unacceptable, and then I sharpen it with my KME. That's that's how I like to do things. That's, that's time efficient for me. Um, but yeah. Um, and then last up, the Curtis ODT. Um, here lately, this knife has um, been like the in addition to knife. So I will always carry, and I should have it out here for, oh, I do have the tough light. <laughs> Here's the tough light, guys. It's, um, it's, it's having a rough go of it. No, this isn't corrosion. It is uh, more roof tar because I went up and made some adjustments uh, after we finished the roof. And um, I, I adjusted the pivot and then I took the pivot out and then I put the blade back in there and I think I may have messed up one of the washers. So it might be time for a new <laughs> tough light. Those are Teflon washers, by the way. But anyways, I'll carry the Victorinox Cadet, which also will get used for just about anything uh, in, my, in my back uh, uh, right pocket. And then this guy will actually go in the pocket watch pocket um, in my, in my jeans, in my front pocket. And then I'll carry, you know, another knife, um, as the main knife. Why? I don't know. It makes me feel cool. <laughs> these, uh, these ODTs go for, I think they start at 300. This one's a little bit more dressy. I know it's a lot of money for a little tiny thing. This was a gift from Jeff. I just love it. I love this little chisel blade. I use it for little tiny things. Most of the time I get it out in the hopes that the whoever I'm around will be like, that's neat. What is that? And then I can tell them about it, right? CTS XHP and has a 90 degree grind. It's not chisel grind. It's a conventional V ground blade. Just a cool little knife, little frame lock. You have to use wrist because there's not the leverage on the flipper tab and the there's the the blade does not weigh enough or it's not long enough to um, get it to deploy on its own. I'll kind of try to. Yeah, that's about as far out as I can get it without using any wrist. But, oh, well, no big deal. Super cool. This is a custom knife. It's just a little tiny thing. Um, it is easy to manipulate, whether you're left or right-handed, once you get used to it. But, yeah, it's kind of a fun little knife to carry for little tiny things. Or if I'm in a situation where I don't want to pull out, right, if I'm carrying the SOCOM Elite, I don't want to pull that out to make a simple cut, to make something uncomfortable, I might just pull the uh, the ODT out. Last but not least, the one knife that I do not use, and many of you know this knife to be, the Dark Horse. This is the Hinderer XM24 Dark Horse, as I have named it. Why? Because it is stonewashed black DLC, and the Hinderer logo is a horse. So why don't I uh, use this knife? Well, um, number one, I'm a Hinderer nut, and I've owned about 27 different Hinderers um, since I've started collecting knives. The XM24 has always been a more difficult to obtain variant. Now here lately, they have been producing more and more and more Hinderers. But as the different blade shapes, different finishes, different you know styles come out, there's always a few in certain categories that become more or less rare. Now, whether or not they're rare doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be worth more money. Sometimes it's just like they just didn't make very many and not many people cared about them. In the case of the XM24 Spanto Stonewash DLC, there are very few of these and these are very popular. 
Um, I thought they were long gone. This popped up on USA Made Blades. Scott Whittington posted on Instagram and I freaked out. Actually, I think I contacted it on Facebook. Um, I, I think uh, I tried to call USA Made Blade. I mess, I blew them up and I don't normally do that. And I was like, for the love of all things that are good, please hold that knife for me just for a bit. Let me, and I mean like it was literally just a couple of days um, while I uh, made sure that I could uh, go ahead and pay for it. You got to budget correctly. You can't just fork the money over, you know, if, you, if you're not ready. It was one of those situations. And um, he was kind enough to do that for me. Now, um, this is a rare version, a very rare version. And it is, to, to my knowledge, um, not a version that is going to be made again for quite some time, if not possibly ever, guys. There, It's rumored that the Stonewash DLC finish is uh, going bye-bye. So uh, it may not be uh, a knife that is around um, uh, ever again. And that is part of the reason I'm not using it. Now, um, I do still have my XM18 three and a half inch scale right here. And the reason I kept it is because with this hinderer being my safe queen currently, it uh, creates a, a great opportunity for me to put this titanium scale back on another uh, XM18 three and a half inch and maybe use it. Maybe carry it once again like some of the other hinders in the past. It's it's not that every hinder I get is always a safe queen. Um, no, actually, I've had four different uh, user uh, hinderers in the past. And the other ones have always just been safe queens. So that when a time comes where it's time for me to pick up a new hinderer, I can sell the one that I've got for a small loss and pick up another one. You can agree with me for that or you you, you can not. Um, I've been doing the exact same thing for about four years now and I probably won't stop <laughs> But yeah, the rest of these get used. Um, this was a lot of fun for me going through and explaining things one by one. I hope that um, I hope that this was something that you guys found entertaining. I thought it would kind of be fun. Get the old poor tough light out here. Um, but yeah, I you know I, I I realized I had never really explained any of this to anybody. So I hope it offers some clarification. Um, I don't know. Let me know, I guess, uh, which one of these is your favorite, what you would or wouldn't use it for and why, um, what you're using and carrying or, you know, what your own limitations are. Let me know, whatever you want down in the comments section. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. If you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a